God's morning, my brothers and sisters. This is the Bishop, Bishop C.R. Davis, Jr. Everlasting Praise, Next Level Ministry. Boy, I tell you, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I mean, it's beautiful out. The sun hasn't come over the horizon completely yet, and I'm sitting here uh, just fired up and excited uh, to share this uh, message with you all this morning to encourage you to inspire you, to uplift you, uh, to be better in your walk with the Lord. Amen. To do better in your walk with the Lord. Uh, to carry yourself as an ambassador of Christ. So this is why we do what we do. Amen. And to get you saved, uh, baptized, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, so that, uh, that when that day comes, amen, you'll be prepared and ready uh, for that day. Amen. Uh, and I just want you uh, this morning for a brief moment to listen to this message and be encouraged. And Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for this day. We praise you and honor you that we were able to open our eyes and to get up this morning and to walk into your brand new mercy because you said every day, uh, you give us new mercy, and that's what this uh, program is about, God's, your mercy, God's mercy. So, Father God, let your mercy uh, overflow, your grace, God, on the hearers today, uh, that they would hear what I say and apply it to their lives so that, God, the enemy won't overtake them. So, Father, we praise you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, I want to come earlier than this uh, and get a set time like I do with Bible study on Wednesday night. Uh, I do Bible study exactly 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. Y'all, excuse me, this coffee is good. But let us go and get into it this morning uh, and get, 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 get it done. Because I want to talk about in times like these, amen, in times like these, my brothers and sisters, in these turbulent times, hopelessness can overwhelm us and our faith may waver but i want to remind you my brothers and sisters that our savior jesus christ is the anchor of hope in the midst of life's storms amen jesus christ is the anchor amen of hope in the midst of life storms Amen. So as for our scripture reading this morning, let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. He says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I tell you, my brother, sister, what an awesome uh, a reality. Remember yesterday I was talking about redeeming the power of the cross. Do you see that? It says fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and author or perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning his shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. My brother says, you got to understand this. You know, I hear people say, oh, I got to do more. I got to do more. And you know what? Do the best with what you have. I got to read my Bible more. I got to know you have to apply what you read more. Amen. Because you can read. My uncle used to call people runt, runt hogs. He said, nephew, in your church, you will find that you have runt hogs. I said, I don't understand that. And I raised pigs in the penitentiary, uh, so I understand what that meant, but uh, how was the spiritual application? He said, you see, just like that runt hog, he eats all the time, but he does not grow. You see, a lot of y'all, y'all eat all the time. You in that Bible 24-7, as long as your eyes can stay awake, you in that Bible. 
and you eating and you eating, but you hollering about, I got to do more. I got to do more. I, 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 I need to do for the, listen, do something with what you already have. Amen. Use that first before you try to put some more in. And what are you saying about that run hog? The reason that run hog, he's a hog that eats all the time and don't grow very big. What's his problem? A lot of like people, he's just like people. If you don't release it, pass it, you're going to blow up. And if you get too much of that mess to stay on the inside, you will explode. Amen? So, a run hog, all they do is eat like a Christian, like a believer. You just eat, 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 but you never share, you never witness, you never do nothing. And you think that your life is on hold because you don't know enough of the word. Now, you are not being obedient to the word. Amen? Jesus was obedient to his father until the point he endured the cross. Amen. Scorning the shame and set down at the right hand of the Father. So we need to understand that number one, Jesus, somebody say Jesus, is our anchor in the storm. And whatever storm uh, is in your life, Jesus is the anchor of, Jesus is our anchor in the storm. Just as a ship, as a ship's anchor holds firm in turbulent, Waters, Jesus holds us secure in the midst of life's challenges. He holds us secure in the midst of life's challenges. Let me tell you something. Bills are not to worry, be worried about. I'm talking about bills like your rent, your mortgage, your insurance, your car notes, your car insurance, uh, your food, your gas, your lights, your water. Uh, all those things are called responsibilities that you are accountable for. And you need to be able to handle those and not overextend uh, your finances. A lot of us, we live beyond our income so much to the point that our outcome is depleted before we even get our check. And then we began to look here and there and get all discombobulated about the situation. But I want you to know that Jesus is our anchor in the storm. Anything beyond you taking care of the responsibility that you're required to take care of, God, his son, Jesus, can take care of it for you. He holds you secure. You don't have to wear and fret. He holds you secure. In the midst of life challenges. And not only that, Jesus endured for our joy. Remember the scripture said, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Jesus endured for our joy. He faced the cross, scorning his shame, to give us eternal life and joy that surpasses our circumstances. He gave us joy because he faced the cross. He took on the punishment for sin. He took on the penalty for sin, which was death. The Bible said, for the wages of sin is death. And that's what you're going to get paid is death for your conduct, for your behavior, for your action. And my brothers and sisters, now that we are born again, believers in the uh, word of God and uh, in Jesus Christ, we are held accountable to carry ourselves a certain way. And we are responsible for getting the word out. And you cannot say that I can't. Yes, you can. Because the Bible says in Acts 1 and 8 that after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. To do what? To be his witnesses. You don't have nothing to fear. You don't have nothing to be afraid of. You just move forward and share your testimony. Just that simple. He didn't ask you to be a Bible scholar. He didn't ask you to have a degree in theology. He didn't ask you to do any of that. He just said, share your testimony. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, 
and you shall be my witnesses. And witness means testify. You shall testify of me. Well, what am I going to say, Jesus? Well, you tell them about when you were strung out, I delivered you. What do I tell them, Jesus? When you was homeless, I gave you shelter. When you was hungry, I gave you food. You tell them when you were sick, I healed you. Hallelujah. That's your testimony. That one day, I was sinking deep, deep in sin, never to rise no more. Death was at my front door until I met a man named Jesus. Somebody told me he could save my soul. He can deliver me from the situation I'm in. And that's the day you said, I confess him as my Lord and Savior. And he came in to you because he said he stand at the door knocking. If any man opened the door, you come in and sup with him. He will come in and you open the door and he came in. And when he came in, you confessed him. And when you confessed him, you were baptized. And when you were baptized, Peter said, and you received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when you receive that, you receive power to share with the world. Don't be afraid. I have people around me every day. Look at Minister Kiki. Look at Evangelist Austin. They wasn't about getting out before the world, telling But now they are on the world stage telling any and everybody that will listen that Jesus Christ is Lord. And when they were going through mothers and adopted mothers that didn't know how they was going to take care of their family, they called own no other name than that of Jesus. Amen. And he endured for our joy. He faced the cross. Not only that, Jesus sits at the right hand of God now. He reigns victorious. And guess what? It's not just him that can. And we can trust in his power and authority to guide us through life's trials. Guess what? When you give your, just as Christ sits on the right hand or the right side of the Father, so shall you sit on the right side of Jesus. But the only way you can sit there, my brothers and sisters, is that you get your heart right, that you get your life right, that you turn from your wicked ways, that you repent of your sins and be baptized for the remission of them. Then you can, like me, have a hope. For tomorrow, have a faith in the future, knowing that my Lord and Savior, that when that day comes, he shall appear and he shall bring his angels and he shall bring his rewards with him and he shall receive me to himself. And that's the, what I'm looking for, my brothers and sisters. I'm looking for that day. I'm enjoying life. I said not too long ago, I'm living my best life. My young life was filled with drugs, alcohol, violence, mayhem, madness, call it what you want. But when I got old in my 40s, senses came to me. My senses came to me when I got in my 40s. And when I got in my 40s, I realized that I wasted a whole lot of time doing nothing, trying to hang out with people that didn't care or want nothing. And then when I moved away from them, they started condemning me. Uh, he ain't nothing but a bootleg preacher. He ain't this, but yes, you can call it what you want. But I am filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm excited that the Lord loved me enough that he died for my sins. I don't know about you, boy. That's enough to shout about right there. That he loved me so much that no matter what I done, that he laid down his life while I was sinning, so that when I came to my senses, I would confess him. And I'm so glad that he did, my brothers and sisters. So listen, I ain't going to hold you no longer. Those of you on your way to work, listening to me. Those of you who are getting ready for work, listening to me. I won't hold you no longer. But I want to tell you this. Don't let hopelessness dim your faith. See, sometimes people feel, fail to realize the Bible said now, that's, that's right now, present. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Hope, expect, faith, substance, faith is a substance of things hoped, that that I expect. Faith is a substance of that that I expect. 
And I expect God to be a man of his word. Because the Bible says he's not like man, that he should lie. So I tell people, listen, they say, Bishop, Pastor, Daddy, how is it that I believe? Listen, y'all. I believe what I preach and I teach, and I live what I believe, and I live what I teach. I'm not just a talker. I'm a walker. And doing this, you got to walk out your faith. You got to walk it out. That's why Paul said that we walk by faith and not by sight. We believe in the invisible. That that's not seen. That's why even though Abraham was promised and he had not received that child that God promised him, Isaac, he did not, he did not, not believe in God, but he still believed God. And the Bible said because Abraham believed God, amen, he was counted as righteous. So don't let your hopelessness, don't let the hopelessness dim your faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus. And remember that he is our hope. Remember that he is our savior. Remember that he is our Lord. May his love and grace sustain you in these turbulent times. Don't give up. Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. In times like this. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Listen, I want to invite you to come out and worship with us. Empowerment Central Church, located at 4440 Malcolm X Boulevard in the sunny south side of Dallas, Texas. Morning service starts at 915. Be there, be square. Be there and miss out over there. Amen. And you come on over and you worship with us. Cause in this house, we are under a leader who preaches the word of God. Uh, he preaches the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. See, we've gotten so caught up in, into what the world is doing to entertain and to hype and, and, and all of that. Uh, the Lord has blessed me with a pastor that uh, when he started talking, you sit there listening. Every now and then, sometimes you'll get a, he'll get an amen or, or he'll get a clap or whatever, but we listen. Because we want to hear. Because faith come by hearing. And hear. <laughs> and here he comes by the word of God. And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach less he was said? We thank God for Pastor H.L. Irem. A man who has. Uh, uh, what do you call it? A man who. I want to use the right word. Because he's been through so lot. So much. I'm sorry. He's been through a lot. He's been through so much. That he has the experience now. He has. See, you have to go through your trials and tribulations to receive or to get the, get the experience that you need to carry out the assignment that God gives us. So we thank God for him. I want to invite you over, uh, 9, 15 uh, a.m. Sunday morning service. Amen. Come in expecting uh, 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 something that would change your life. Don't don't come in there just to spectate. Come in there receiving something. So with that, I, I'm going to let y'all go. I am the bishop, Bishop C.R. Davis, Jr., Everlasting Praise, Next Level Ministry. And let me say this. I want to thank God for each and every one of you that supports Everlasting Praise, Next Level Ministry. Enemy, you just wait and see. Some folks told me, Bishop, I can't support you if you ain't in a building. I said, that's what's wrong. Mm -hmm. We want to stay in the building, but nobody goes out into the field. Jesus said, I prayed to the Father, prayed to the Father uh, that he would send laborers into his vineyard. For the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Everybody wants to be fed. Everybody wants to be catered to and taken care of. But nobody wants to take on the, the responsibility to do what he says do. He says, go ye therefore and make disciples. I'm going to leave you with that. Y'all take care. And hope to see you at the morning service. Father, we thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, for 
the hearers, for the doers. I thank you for my supporters, and I thank you for those who spoke against and said that it could not be. Those who don't understand vision nor the visionary. Those who don't have the perception or knowledge of your word. To take a chance and to step out on faith. And to reach this lost and dying world through what the world calls social media. God, we just thank you for this tool that you've given us. And we use the world and this as our pulpit to preach the gospel to all those who come and listen to what I have to say. And believing in the gospel that I preach, God, that they sit there and the gospel, uh, the Holy Spirit comes into the world to convict the world of his sin. That is that sinner sitting there thinking, what am I going to do? Thinking about suicide, thinking about unlifing himself or herself. God, I thank you for your word that just encouraged them this morning to endure in times like these. It may seem hard, but times like these are temporary. Our circumstances, that that surrounds us, there's always a way to break through. Situations that we sit in and find ourselves, Always a way to get up and get out. And we thank you, God, for your word that leads and guides us through the power of your Holy Spirit every day. So, Father, bless those who bless me and this ministry. Bless them a hundredfold, God. Bless them. In a sick heal to my member in Oklahoma, I want to pray for her. Sister Betty and her family. And I want you to pray for her. And pray for her family. Because there's sickness in the family. And it's a sickness that could be death. But we say it's a sickness that's not unto death. So Father we thank you now. For the prayer warriors. That stand beside me. And walk with me. And my counselors that counsel with me. I thank you for them, God. And I thank you for the woman you gave me 34 years ago uh, who I asked for would love me and all my faults. She stood to test the time, Father. And I need you to touch her body and heal it today. I need you to touch her body today and heal it, God. And I need you to strengthen her so she can get up and move about and be about your business because she's your praise and worship. Father, I thank you now. In the name of Jesus, for all my uh, people that are around me, Minister Kiki, Reverend, Reverend Smith, thank you for Evangelist Austin. I thank you for the Moors, and I thank you, God, because they've been walking with me a long time. And God, that tells me that I must be saying something. I thank you for my brother in Atlanta, Georgia, Brian, who messaged me on Messenger, and he asked his brother for something. I did not refuse. I say it's done. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, brother, for looking out for me. Thank you. We praise God for you. And Father, now, as I get ready to sign off, touch, heal, deliver, and set free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. And remember, this is God's morning. A morning of worship and praise and the word that God gives us opportunity to share. Y'all be blessed and we'll talk to you later.